Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is alternate structures uh, very similar to sapling growth and you know the uh, process of basically setting it up. So I have a procedure that I've worked on with one of our mods for uh, MC Toolkit and uh, he was helping somebody work out something for alternate structures and we ended up just collaborating to work on something that we could actually both use. So uh, out here, what I have is a few trees that we can use for this particular project. And as you might notice, all of them are centralized. So there is an uneven number for how many blocks there are. So we have the one, two, three on either side. There's three on either side. And then there is, this one only has uh, two on either side. And then this one has three on either side. So we'll basically uh, use these to create our different procedures. And I'll show you the difference between them when we set them up. So the first thing that we actually need to do is create our actual tree. And uh, when you're designing a tree, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your leaves are connected to the logs in some particular way. Uh, the reason for this is they will despawn, they'll start to decay if they're not set up um, in some way connected to the actual log itself. So if, you, for example, if I were to place a log like this and then place leaves like this or like that, then what it's going to do is basically decay. It needs to have all the connections on the faces in order to basically um, be able to be classified as connected. So if I wanted to put something, for example, here, then I would have to kind of branch it off like that so it would connect. So again, if you wanted it like that, then I would have to do that or that in order to make sure that it's connected to the log. Uh, the reason why it's not decaying right now is because when you place down leaves by default, it will not be decay. If we open up the F3 screen and we can see that it says persistent true, that means that the leaves are not going to be checked for decay. Um, when we basically place it down next to a log, this won't really have any effect if we place it down ourselves, but we can use commands to basically make sure that persistent, um, the persistent is false. So that's what we're going to do with these. And they're all set up in a certain way that they are connected to the log. As you can see here, they're connected to the log through other leaves, all the ones up to that point and all these should be fine for not decaying. So let's start with the section here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two points to basically update the leaves. And then what I can do is after that, I can actually go ahead and fill in the area with structure voids. Now structure voids are something a little bit different. They're not, they won't actually load in the, when the structure is generated, they will allow other blocks to have priority when they do spawn. This is really handy for trees and other structures that want to give priority over certain blocks and stuff. So yeah, we can use that. And you know, we could actually go ahead and go over here and I'm just gonna select the grass and I'm gonna go slash fill uh, filling is the fastest way to update the leaves. So we're going to set fill and then our coordinates. We can use tab to get the block that we're looking at. And then we'll go over to this one over here. We'll just branch up one block because that's how many our trees are. And then we can just get the coordinates for this location. And then what we can do is we can go structure void and then we want to replace and oh pardon me nope what we want is oak leaves and then we want to replace it with oak leaves and the reason for that is when we replace it it will basically update the 
blocks to be persistent. Uh, now, if you don't add the replace, then it's just gonna fill all your structures in with leaves. So make sure that you use the replace command to basically replace it with the same thing. All right, so before I do that, I'm just going to look at the leaves. And as you can see that they are persistent true. So all of these are different, are different trees and stuff. And as you can see, they're all persistent true for the things. Now, when we replace it, it will set it to persistent false. So we can go up to them and now you can see the persistent and then the, the red, it's now red, which means it's false. So all of these are false now. So that basically means that they can decay over time. And as I, as you can see that they're not actually decaying right now because they're all connected to the logs in some sort of way. So now what we can do is we can basically start the process of going and slash fill. And then we want to get the coordinates for these two points. It doesn't matter where you're setting them up. Just make sure once you get one coordinate, you can break the other block. And then we're going to get the other coordinate and then we're going to go structure void and replace. And then we want error and then we're going to break that block. And then we're going to basically fill that in. Now we can't actually see it uh, by default. Uh, you might be able to see the hitboxes are updating. If we go here and go show invisible blocks, you can see that there's a whole bunch of little red icons. This may, means that it's structure voids. Uh, if it's not a structure void, what you'll see is a little blue block like so, and that basically indicates that it will be error that spawns there. So we want to make sure that the ones for trees and stuff are set to the red block. Now, you, if you're wanting to add entities, you can enable entities for the structure block itself. Uh, this will basically copy all entities over to that. I have noticed though with structure void or structure blocks that if you try to save over the same name um, without deleting the file first, when you create a structure, it will not override the structure file properly. So make sure that you um, get everything sorted up and make sure that you set the settings that you want before you basically save it. All right, so I'll just quickly go through all these other ones and set up the structure voids, and then I will cut back in once we got that part done. All right, so we got our trees all set up, and now all we need to do is we need to go ahead and save them under certain names. It doesn't matter what you name them, but we need to make sure that they're unique names so we can go ahead and uh, load them into Amcrater. Now, I should make one final note uh, before I do this is when you save your structures, uh, make sure not to delete this particular world until you've imported it into Amcrater. Reason being is if you delete the world after you save the structures, a lot of people have this issue, but um, the structures are also deleted with the world. So make sure to actually exit out without deleting the world and um, yeah, you'll, you won't run into issues of losing all your work. Um, it's good to have a building world in general and just back that up when you have a chance. I'll show you how to back things up for your worlds in just a minute. But uh, let's give these a name. So I'll just call this one tree. Um, oh, we could go oak tree and then underscore one and then we can save that. I think entities were off, that's fine, good. And then we can go over here, we'll go oak tree and then two, and then we can save this one. And then we can go over here and this will be our oak tree, tree three. And then we can go over here and we can save our oak tree four. So oak tree four and there we go all right so now that they're all saved we probably want to know where they're located so let's go into um our resource packs we can actually go to our destination folder in amp crater so i'll show you both ways uh the fastest way that i've found to get to the folder rather than having to search is just to go to options resource packs open resource pack folder 
and then it'll bring you to the location where your M Crater uh, workspace for your project is. Uh, you want to go back to one called Run, and then you want to go into your, uh, I believe it saves, and then your world that you were just in. So the world name will be the one that you've basically named it. I called it Test World. And then what you want to do is find a folder called Generated. And this is where your structures are saved, is in the Minecraft one. Structures, and then your structures will be located here. Um, as a good rule of thumb, I would probably back up your build worlds, especially before um, going ahead and updating mCrater, because they will be wiped if you change the version of the like the workspace so if you go from 1.16.5 to 1.17.1 all your worlds will be basically reset all right so now that we know where the files are located let's go out of this we don't actually need the game up anymore and what we can do is we can just import them directly but we're going to make sure that we still have our test world we don't delete it because we'll lose those files like I showed before. And let's just go ahead, go to resources, structures, and then import structure from Minecraft. And then we'll have the all the different um, structures that we imported across our different worlds. Now you'll notice that it says test world and then the name of the structure on the other side of it. Um, this is obviously where the file is located. So let's just import one, we'll import all of these, and then we can go ahead and start working on the procedures for them. Uh, there is each individual procedure will need, or each structure will need its own thing. And then we're going to need um, something to basically trigger that uh, randomization part. So we'll do that in just a second. So let's go ahead and we'll start by creating uh, something that we can basically go ahead and implement for just something to spawn the structures in, like a sapling. I'm just going to use a solid texture to basically give us an idea of what it will look like. So we'll go 116 by 16, and I'll just kind of do something like... I don't know this just so we have an idea of what we're this is our block and then we can go ahead and import that into M creator so we'll save this as and should be popping up something there we go desktop it was because I was uh, it was under my thumbnails so that takes a little while to load all right so we'll save this as um, our sapling texture and we'll save that yes I want to save and then we can go ahead and import the texture for that as well so import texture and then we want to block texture and then we're going to go just click on sapling there we go we have our texture all right so now that we have that, what we need is a block, and then we're going to go and just call it sapling. You can have this any name that you want. I'm going to actually set this to a cross model uh, because that's what saplings are, and then we're going to just import that for our texture. Uh, we can set a item texture. This is how basically saplings are set up, so you don't have the uh, cross model as your template. So if you want to set that up, then you're going to need a item texture for that. You can import one through this little button right here and then import a item texture for it. Uh, particles are basically the particles when you break the block. Uh, by default, it's going to just get the particles from this block though. So you can decide how you want it to set up. Um, for rotation, we're not going to have any of that. We don't need it. Um, as far as the hitbox, we can leave it the way it is. I think that'll be fine. Um, we want to set this to plants for our material type. And we'll put this under redstone just so it's easier to find. As far as the sound, we'll have it set to the 
um, plants, so we can basically make it sound like that. And we want our hardness and resistance uh, set to zero when we're actually creating the sapling block itself. Uh, reason for this is uh, because plants in general, like saplings and stuff, can be punched with one hit and they, they break instantly. Uh, we also want to enable can walk through block. This will in make us allow, make the hitbox not collidable. So we want to make sure that is enabled for your saplings as well. Uh, the other thing you can set the drop properties. Um, generally, though, it's basically just going to drop itself. So you want to make sure that if you're working with a sapling or whatever, then you can just leave it the same thing. Tool able to destroy. You don't really need anything for that particularly. Uh, the update tick, I would just leave the same. Um, it should be fine the way it is. And then you might want to set your foliage color for, or the texture color set to foliage, uh, because that's basically how saplings and stuff, I think, if I remember correctly, are set up. Uh, AI pathfinding and block being pushed, you can set these things to the same thing or change them however you want. By default, they should be fine the way they're set up. Uh, block, uh, we will need this. Um, Will we need this? I don't know if we will need this. I probably will need this. So we'll go ahead and enable this. And then we're going to just set the inventory to zero and uncheck these two boxes. So when the block does have block uh, we that we use, we'll use MBT, so we'll need this. Energy and fluid storage, don't need to worry about it. Uh, procedures. Uh, we will set one up for update tick in just a second, but I want to get everything up or set up first. So we got this, and then we can just go ahead and save that. We'll go back into here, and then I want to make a uh, couple changes. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is make it tick randomly, and I'm going to set up a update tick procedure. Now this will update randomly based on the world tick rate. So um, basically when you go into game rule and then set the tick uh, rate, you can, by default it's three, but uh, you can set it to be faster or slower. This will affect how the block actually generates. So this is basically going to be where our random procedure is going to be set up. We'll set that up in just a little bit but we actually need some other procedures set up before we can do that. All right, so the first thing is we got that part done and we got the random tick part done. So under advanced properties, we have it randomly ticking. Uh, now we just need to basically set up the procedures for each one of those uh, structures that we've created. So what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create one, we'll just call this oak tree one and to keep it simple you can name it whatever you want and then we're going to import the template that we have for the structure now again this is going to be called from the procedure so each one of these procedures are going to be for the actual structure itself now we might need to make some adjustments to this particular procedure depending on this the tree size itself now, depending on which one, now structure three uh, is only two by two. So we're gonna have to update these two blocks right here for those. But this was, this one is for oak tree one. So this is perfectly set up the way it should be. Um, outside of that, uh, this is, we're gonna have to actually set the structure location that we're gonna be spawning it from. Uh, it's all set up to basically go ahead and create the block that, or the tree itself. So all we need to basically do is set the tree structure for what we want and uh, adjust the size of the actual structure. And depending on where basically what, uh, how big the structure that we need to actually go ahead and make, uh, this will vary depending on where we're going to basically create the uh, thing. Now, again, uh, the y-axis is for this one. It lists everything here. This is the distance from the block. You can set this up however you want. 
uh, by default it's three by three and this will do a three by three area so this is x and this is z uh, this tree is seven by seven so we could set this to seven and seven and then we would have to offset this by three and three so we'll do that one for this one the distance that we're basically going to be determining is going to test if there's air blocks within that area and if there isn't then what we want to do is basically um, not spawn the structure this is basically where this tag comes in this is going to test um, if there is not the air blocks or any other particular blocks that we want to basically spawn into the structure so in our case uh, we would want to test for leaves uh, oak oak logs uh, well not necessarily oak logs but um, oak leaves for sure and other things like that and then we can basically go ahead and spawn the structure in um, reason being that we're using a tag is it will allow us to basically go ahead and make it a little bit more dynamic and allow for overriding other specific things but we need to make sure that air blocks cave error and structure voids or structure error is all selected in that particular tag so i will call this um what is this uh we'll just call it forge and then we'll do the colon and then we'll call it um, error blocks uh, to keep it simple. You can name it whatever you want for the tag name, but um, and you can put it even under your own namespace, that'll be fine too. But just for simplicity, I'm just keeping it like that. Actually, we could even just go ahead and call it error. That should be fine too. All right, so now that we got that set up, we have our structure set up to basically be placed. Uh, what we want to make sure is that's all set up and we can save this and then what we need to do is go ahead and do that for the other structures as well so oak tree 2 and then we need oak tree 3 and oak tree 4 Uh, under oak tree three, what we're going to have to do is adjust the size. So this should be two, two, five, and five. And that should be set up perfectly fine. Uh, one other thing that you should know is the X and Z location should be the same as the X and Z location up here. So I forgot to update that throughout the procedures. So you'll have to set that up for those ones there and oh pardon me actually no uh, the way that i have it set up it basically already inherits the position for those uh coordinates it just assigns it to those ones and then puts it back into that so that's fine you don't actually have to adjust anything for the size just make sure that the size here is the proper size for your structure all right, and we want the air, so everything's set up for that one. Did I set the... No, I didn't. So let's set that to structure three, and then we'll set structure four in here, and structure two should be this one. All right, so now that we have those, uh, what we can start working on is the randomization for the different structures. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a number variable and this will allow us to assign a random number to it. So I'm just going to call it num for short and then we can set a number and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to custom variables. We're going to basically put the variable down here, select our variable and then we're going to go to math and then random. And then this will basically assign a random number between zero and one to the actual variable that we're going to be testing for. And then what we need to do is, depending on how many structures you have, you're going to have to make an if statement for each one of them. So we're just going to use if else statements to test for the range that the structure is in. So we can do that a couple ways. The easiest way is to test for a lower number first and then just to keep expanding that number until we get something that is 
uh, it finds it between. So for example, uh, we can set this equal to or less than, which is the the arrow that goes like that with an under, under underline that is underneath the operator. Uh, again, you can set the operators by clicking on the center button. Uh, that again goes for your light blue and your dark blue ones as well as math operators as well. So what we can do is test for our local variable. Is local variable equal to or less than? And then we need a number to basically test for that range. So we're going to set this to 25, pardon me, 0 0.25. And because there's four structures, we can do that in quarters. So we can do that from 0 0.5. And then we can also do that for 0 0.75. And then finally, we can do that for a solid one. Now, if it is equal to or less than one, then it will already have tried to test for the other ones before then. So it will really only be testing between 1 and 0 0.75. So let's go ahead and add our call procedures. So we need to go down to add advanced, and then we're going to call the procedure in with this block right here. And then we can set our oak tree 1, oak tree 2, oak tree three and oak tree four and that will basically run the procedure based on the system that we have set up here all right so now that we have that part done uh what we need to do is make sure that we have that local variable or that pardon me that local tag that we have that we set up for forge so we're going to go ahead and create a tag call it error because that's what we called it and then what we want to make sure that it's under the same namespace it's the same name and we want to make sure that it's a block tag and then we're going to go ahead and select all of the three different types of error blocks and then what we also want to do is we want to select any blocks that you want to basically test for and basically whitelist into the procedure so the structure can spawn so we've used oak leaves. We might want to select all the different types of leaves that are in the game. You might want to select different types of logs just to be on the safe side. Uh, now, one thing to keep in mind is any block that you basically go ahead and click, uh, select is going to basically be overrided. So if the structure spawns, it might break those blocks and might replace them. So be very careful on what you do select. Uh, for example, if we start working with like copper and other things like that, then basically what this can do is it can actually end up replacing those blocks with leaves and other types of materials if it's in the area. So we only really want to select leaves and stuff that are relevant to the area. I was going to select the logs, but we probably don't want to do that. We just want to make sure that leaves and air are set up in the area. However, other things that you might want to do is uh, test for things like grass, uh, flowers, things that are very low maintenance and can be replaced like the grass and stuff like that. This will allow us to um, not worry about checking for these particular flowers and stuff. And it will allow some extra more flexibility for spawning the structure in. Um, other things you might want to select is grass and stuff like that, but I'll just leave that as it is um, for the thing. We can actually select grass and maybe dirt as well. Uh, we'll select dirt, and I think that's about it that we need to select. Uh, there's other plants and stuff that you might want to consider as well, but we'll just leave that at the flowers. So we'll add that to the tag, and we should have all of them set up like that. Just make sure that you have the air cave error and the void error set up. Now we can save that and then we'll basically go ahead and start up the world again. We'll create a new world and then we'll go ahead and place down some saplings in the world using our block and stuff. All right, <laughs> of course we would spawn in on an island. All right, so what, I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over here um, 
can actually chest a few different locations. We can spawn one over here. And we'll need to go to redstone, grab our block for our sapling. I'll place it down here. Now, because the way that I have it set up, it will basically allow it to spawn in this area. Any one of these structures should be fine for spawning it in unless this is in the way. But uh, there isn't a log within the radius that it will basically be prevented. Uh, it should be in the perfect area for it to spawn. So leave that one like that. We'll go over here and place another one down like that. And then we can go ahead and go over here and we'll just place one by the sand. Now the sand one won't actually update because we didn't whitelist sand. Air is whitelisted, but basically everything in this top area right here, this layer right here is going to be tested for and above. So in our case, that won't um, be a valid spawn for the thing. These other ones though, they can generate. Uh, we're gonna speed up the process of the update tick just so we can save some time. We can go and set game rule random tick speed and then we'll just set this to a thousand and these should be random. So as you can see, this one hasn't updated. That's because it's conditions are basically false. Uh, we can also see that this structure spawned in and it has its own uh, variant of what one basically got it. And then there's this one here and that one spawned in. So let's uh, place a couple more down. We'll just place one over here and should update. So there's another type. That one happened to be that one. Not sure if this one will update there. Yeah, that one will. See if we can't get that small tree. That one's pretty common. Okay, still got that one. There we go, we got the small one. So that's all the different four trees that we've created. We created that one, this one, the other one, and then the small little bush one there as well. So as you can see, it's random. It will basically place whatever tree is in that particular order. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. Uh, it's a really simple script. I'll make sure to upload it onto my example repository for GitHub, and then you guys can basically use it um, at your own will and uh, use it for your projects and stuff like that. So outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.